What you see behind me is a $2,800 automatic lawn mowing robot. And this robot, this is the Luba by Mamotion. And the problem with the Luba by Mamotion is that it is a GPS based robot. It can mow when you're not home. It can mow when you're 30 states away in another country. And that's great and all, but someone can steal this $2,800 robot from you when you're sleeping, when you're 30 states away, and you can't do anything about it. So I'm talking about an automatic lawn mowing robot on a 3D printing channel because, well, two reasons. One, I'm gonna use 3D printing for 30 cents worth of plastic to fix this $2,800 robot. But also, the technology is just frankly cool because when you think about a 3D printer, it's using a nozzle to place a bead of plastic in a particular order in order for it to make a 3D model. This GPS-based robot is doing the same thing. I map it out with my cell phone and it takes all the coordinates of my perimeter of my yard. And when I click the mow button, it actually calculates a tool path, if you will, for this robot to travel. So if you think about it, this robot is essentially doing the exact same thing as your 3D printer. You would think that the company would allow you to track this robot elsewhere, especially for $2,800, but they don't. So the best thing that I could think to do was to use my 3D scanner and 3D scan the backside of Luba and then take that into Fusion 360 or some CAD program and develop and design some kind of super special splitter style added compartment in order to make this robot safe. So what you see here is my RevaPoint range 3D scanner. And originally I was planning to use this scanner, but then last minute I decided to swap over to the POP2 because the POP2 provides a little bit more accuracy, whereas the range typically is used for larger objects. So one of the misconceptions with 3D scanning is that once you're done scanning an object, you can immediately send it directly to the printer and print away. And depending on what you are scanning, that is sometimes possible, but in 90% of all cases, that's not the option that you should go for. So once I had the 3D scan from the POP2, that was gonna be imported directly into Fusion 360, and I was going to use the geometry from the scan in order to create something like this. And this really looks like nothing, but it's a very custom shaped box that perfectly matches the contours of Luba that has a hole on the inside of it. And this hole, it's gonna accept a smart tag from Samsung or an air tag from Apple or whatever you want. And it just slides on in there. And then this just simply slots into the splitter area of Luba. I would rather just simply do a test print and modify that rather than, um, you know, clean the scan up and, and get a better scan. So it looks like I've got this at 63 millimeters uh, long. Um, let me go ahead and see, see down here, this is gonna, it looks like this is probably gonna have to be, in order to fit this shape, kind of extended this way, kind of fit the curve a little bit. Now, I don't think I'm gonna fit the curve perfectly, but uh, especially with a flat line there, but as long as I can kind of get this in the right direction, uh, I can modify the actual model itself. And after the montage, this is the final product that came out. So this, as a first product always is, definitely needs to be iterated on. The two major flaws here is that the contours don't quite match the Luba body as well as I would hope. The second thing, which is the most major part, is that I originally designed this such that the tracker slots in, and then this slides into the back of Luba. And then I was gonna have to design a second part, which was gonna be a lid to prevent the tracker from falling out as Luba was in use. But then I decided I could redesign this thing entirely. So what I learned here is that I actually need somewhat of a um, lofted uh, function going on here because the top 
uh, actually the back of it is sloped uh, kind of, well, I don't know how to explain it, but you obviously saw. Um, so I need some kind of a lofted uh, object. So what you see here is about 25 minutes of redesign and iteration and I was able to move the GPS tracker chamber to the inside of the box so that it does not require a lid and the tracker also won't fall out. I was also able to fit the curves of the Luba body better with some harder fillets and then that lofted shell I spoke about. And then lastly, in this iteration, I did add some drain holes in case water happens to get in, but I later removed them because I decided that would probably cause more moisture than it would prevent. So when sliced appropriately, the final design comes to a whopping 46 grams worth of plastic. And if you consider a roll of PEDG costs about $24 per kilogram, that means this design cost me somewhere in the neighborhood of an hours of labor and about a dollar and ten cents worth of plastic in order to print it. I'd say it's a pretty good deal in order to save a two thousand eight hundred dollar robot from potential theft. If you guys happen to have a Luba of your own and you want to protect your Luba from theft as well, I'm going to have a link to this STL in the description. Now, typically I don't do this, but I'm going to link the STL in the description below. Guys, you can pick it up yourself. And if you don't have a 3D printer, well, the sponsor of today's video is PCBWay. I suspect many of my viewers have already heard of PCBWay, but given the nature of this video, there's a really big chance that some of you guys have not heard of them. And if you guys are hobbyists or DIY people in general, PCBWay might be something that you're interested in. PCBWay is going to be your one-stop shop for PCB manufacturing as well as 3D printing, CNC work, or anything else like that. And it is actually super easy to get started with PCBWay, so first go ahead and click the link in my description to take you to their webpage and select the correct manufacturing method. After that, go ahead and upload your Gerber files, your STL files for your appropriate manufacturing method. Go ahead and click and select the appropriate options and then click the submit button. After your files have been submitted, they're gonna be checked out by professionals to make sure that there's nothing suspicious. And if they do find something suspicious, they will send you an email for confirmation. Once you get your confirmation from PCBWay, the only thing that you have to do is simply wait a few days until your package arrives at your doorstep. And as for this particular video, if this is a product that you're interested in, guys, like I said, the file is in the description below. And when you upload it to PCBWay's website, make sure that you choose a manufacturing method that is going to be UV tolerant because it would really suck to get your product in the mail, attach it to your Luba, and only have it disintegrate within a few days. What I would recommend and also what is going to be the cheapest for you is going to either be PETG or ABS. As for the duration of this video, thank you guys for watching and sticking around. This has been a spectacular project to take on. And if you are not subscribed, guys, these videos are very, very difficult to make. They take a lot of time and dedication. So please drop a subscription and a like down below. I hope to see you in the next video. See you later. Wait, 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 hold on. I cannot end the video there. If you guys thought this video was fun and entertaining, go ahead and click that video up there. I guarantee that you're gonna like it as well. And it's a little hard for me to recommend that because I don't even know what that video is. But what I do know is I made it and I know that YouTube recommended it to you and that means you're gonna like it. So, bye.